At time k, we observe a set of measurements that contains all the clutter and object measurements that we receive at that time. The object measurements, OK, and the clutter measurements, CK, are assumed independent. And given XK, the distribution of ZK is therefore given by the convolution formula. That is, the multi-object PDF of ZK given XK is obtained by taking the sum over all mutually disjoint sets, C and O, whose union is ZK, of the clutter distribution, PC, K of C, times the object measurement distribution, GK of O given XK. Note that you can think of every term in this summation as an association hypothesis, where you look at all the measurements in ZK and you go, I think these measurements are object measurements, whereas all the other measurements are clutter. And you then make sure to go through all the possible ways of splitting the measurements into object and clutter measurements. Now, we already have a model for the object measurements, but we also need a model for the clutter in order to complete our model. As before, we assume that the clutter is a Poisson point process with intensity function lambda z. To evaluate the Poisson point process PDF for a set C, we take e to the power of minus the integral over lambda c, where the integral is also known as the Poisson rate, lambda c bar times a product of the intensity function lambda c for all the elements in the set c. As you can see, we've already obtained an expression for the measurement model that we know how to compute. Since zk given xk is the union of a Poisson random finite set ck and a multi Bernoulli random finite set ok, we refer to zk as a Poisson multi Bernoulli random finite set. The Poisson multi Bernoulli is in fact a very important random finite set distribution in multi-object tracking, and one that we use extensively also for assumed density filtering. In this expression for the measurement model, we are essentially using the convolution formula two times. First, to take the union of OK and CK, and second, to take the union of all the object measurements in the expression for GK. An easy way to simplify the expression for the measurement model and eliminate the need for using the convolution formula twice, is to note that given xk, the set of measurements is the union of nk plus one independent sets, namely the clutter measurements and the nk different sets of object measurements. This means that we can directly use the convolution formula to express the multi-object PDF of zk given xk. We then get a summation over all disjoint sets c and O1 to ONK, whose union is ZK, of the product of PCK of C, times a product of GK of OI given XKI over all the different objects. Inside this expression, PCK denotes the clutter distribution, which is a Poisson point process PDF, and GK denotes the distribution of the measurements from a single object, which is a multi Bernoulli PDF. To make sense of this summation, I think it helps to think of every term as an association hypothesis. That is, in every term we go, I think these measurements are clutter, these measurements are the object measurements from object 1, and so on, until every measurement in ZK is assigned to one of the sets. We then sum over all such association hypotheses and evaluate the multi-object PDFs corresponding to the different hypotheses. I want you to note how easy it is to derive the measurement model from the model assumptions. In fact, it's barely a derivation. We essentially just look at the model assumptions and use the convolution formula to write it down. Another interesting aspect is that the summation over all these disjoint sets may actually include associations that we consider impossible. For instance, that 10 measurements are associated to the same object. This is not useful right now, and those terms can simply be ignored since gk then takes the value zero. However, you can use this formula also if single objects can generate multiple measurements, and all you have to do is to adjust the expression for gk. This would give us a measurement model for extended objects in an almost trivial fashion. This is interesting and very useful if you want to consider other model assumptions. On the other hand, for the standard assumptions considered here, Carl presented a complete measurement model 
already in the videos on tracking n object in clutter. Since the underlying model assumptions have not changed, we expect the models to be the same, but we need to express our model on a different form to see the relation. We have already noticed that our expression for the measurement model contains a summation over all possible association hypotheses. Earlier in this course, we used the vector theta k to denote our hypotheses. Element i in theta k describes the association hypothesis for object i and takes the value 0 if object i is undetected and the value j if measurement j comes from object i. To express the measurement distribution, we then summed over all possible values of theta k. The summation over all mutually disjoint sets c and O1 to ONK may include hypotheses where we associate multiple detections to the same object. If we ignore these terms, for which GK is anyway zero, there is a one-to-one -one mapping between those sets and the vector theta k, assuming that we know the vectors ZK1 to ZKMK. For instance, we can use theta ki to find the set of object measurements oi. If theta ki is zero, oi is the empty set. And if theta ki takes some value greater than zero, oi is a set that contains the measurement indicated by theta ki. The hypothesis vector theta k does not explicitly specify which measurements are clutter, but the set of clutter measurements is simply all measurements that are not object measurements. Since there is a one-to-one -one mapping between theta k and these disjoint sets, at least when we ignore terms where a single object is associated to multiple measurements, there is also a one-to-one -one mapping between the terms in the different summations. Let us look at an example, which is simple enough to make sense of these summations. Suppose we only have one object and one measurement at time k. Since there is only one object, the multi-object PDF of ZK given XK is just the sum over all mutually disjoint sets C and O1, whose union is ZK, of this product. Since ZK only contains one element, there are only two possibilities. Either C contains the vector Z and O1 is empty, or C is empty and O1 contains the vector Z. This gives us two terms where we have one clutter measurement and no object measurement in the first term, and no clutter measurement and one object measurement in the second. Plugging in the expressions for the clutter and object measurements gives us e to the power of minus lambda bar c times lambda c of z times one minus pd, where the first two factors represent the clutter distribution and the third factor, the absence of object measurement. Plus, e to the power of minus lambda bar c times pd times gk of z given x, where the first factor corresponds to the clutter distribution and the latter to the object distribution. To help you see the connection to summations over theta k, we can express this on a different form that may look a bit silly. To obtain this form, we introduce theta k, which is a single integer number, theta k1, when we only have one object. As you can see, the expression looks quite long and complicated, but I'll walk you through it. We have a summation over the possible associations, theta k1, where theta k1 equals zero means that the object is undetected, and theta k1 equals one means that the object is detected. If we compare this to the previous expression, we note that theta equals zero corresponds to the first term, and theta equals one corresponds to the second term. When theta k1 is equal to zero, we get e to the power of minus lambda bar c times lambda c of z1 times 1 minus pd of x1, since theta ki is equal to 0 when i is equal to 1, and there is no i such that theta ki is greater than 0. This means that we obtain the same expression as before when theta k1 is equal to 0. When theta k1 is 1, the first product is 1, whereas the second product contains one factor. We therefore get e to the power of minus lambda bar c times lambda c of z1 times pd of x1 times gk of z1 given x1 divided by lambda c of z1. And since the lambda c of z1 factors cancel out, we are again left with the same expression as before. The fact that we first multiply with lambda c of z1 
and then divide by the same factor if theta1 is 1, is related to the fact that theta k only specifies the object measurements, and we simply know that all other measurements must be clutter measurements. So, at least in this toy example, we managed to express the measurement model on a form that resembles what we've seen earlier in this course. It turns out that we can do this more generally. And if zk contains the vectors zk1 to zkmk, whereas xk contains the elements xk1 to xknk, we can express the measurement model on the following form. As you can see, this is very similar to the expression on the previous slide. And essentially the only difference is that we now have mk measurements and therefore have a product over j from 1 to mk of lambda c of zkj instead of a single factor. Interestingly, this expression is also very similar to the expression for the measurement model that Carl presented previously. In fact, as long as the sets contain the same elements as the corresponding matrices, the only difference between the two expressions is a factor mk factorial. In retrospect, you might argue that we could have jumped directly to this relation, since I told you about this relation in an earlier video, and since the assumptions underlying the measurement model have not changed. But there are several reasons why it's useful to present this derivation as well. As a side note, I'd like to mention that you sometimes see the measurement model expressed on this form instead, where the product over 1 minus pd is handled differently. Instead of only taking the product of 1 minus pd over all i for which theta i is equal to 0, we here take the product from 1 to nk, and then cancel out the factors for which i is greater than 0. Let us summarize what we've learned. First of all, it's important to note that objects can still only generate at most one measurement that the clutter measurements are still assumed to be a Poisson point process, and so on. That is, the measurement model is still fundamentally the same as before. Under these assumptions, we realize that zk given xk is the union of a Poisson random finite set and a multi Bernoulli random finite set, which is what we refer to as a Poisson multi Bernoulli random finite set. One difference compared to before is that it's essentially trivial to derive the measurement model thanks to the convolution formula. You may have forgotten how we did this previously, but I find the original derivation significantly more involved, since we had to obtain a prior model for both theta k and mk, use the law of total probability to condition on this variable, and so on. Thanks to the convolution formula, we elegantly avoid that entire process. We also noted that it's easy to adjust derivation using the convolution formula to also handle extended objects, where each object can generate multiple measurements. On the other hand, even though I prefer using the convolution formula to derive the measurement models, the original derivation still gives the same result, and it's good to know that the derivations do not contradict each other.